Welcome to Change Login Friends, a weekly talk show about adult diapers. Thanks to our partners for helping us bring you great developer pods each and every week. Check them out at fastly.com, fly.io, and typesense.org. Okay, let's talk. Matt Ryer is back, and he's got a Back to the Future t-shirt on. You're back. The musical. I'm back. There's a musical, Back to the Future, the musical? Yeah. I didn't know this. Great Scott Marty! I can't believe you haven't heard of the musical. I haven't. Never. And I'm a big fan. Yeah, of the originals, I assume. Not of the musical, if you've never heard of it. Well, of course I meant the Back to the Future fan. Since he can't logically mean that, Jared, I'd have just deleted it in my brain before saying it, if I were you. Yeah, this is a musical in London. I'm trying to defeat the the camera as follows my face. Yeah, he's really, for the audio only folks, I'm going to narrate this to some degree. He's like lifting his shirt. I don't know if he's trying to like show us something. I think he's trying to cover up his face, which would be much appreciated. Beneath or the actual decal that's on his shirt, it says Back to the Future the musical. Don't pull it up any further than that, please. And then the decal is, you've got your Doc, you've got your Marty McFly. So it's a stage show in London. Okay, I've never heard of this. It's a stage show in London, yeah. And a musical, and, and a, a really good one. I enjoyed it. There's a lot of controversy around this film, you know that, right? Is there? What? Some people say it's not possible. Yeah, I'm going to try to recap it to some degree. So the dad in the original film was not treated very well as an actor, and that's why in... Part two, spoiler. The actor was not treated very well and had some issues with them and something like that. And so basically, when you, at least in this day as an actor, you essentially gave your likeness to the franchise you were with. And that's why in part two, the dad is upside down. Uh Because they want to, you can't recognize a person when they're upside down. And so they transplanted his likeness with virtual effects and, you know, all this different stuff. And there's a big thing with this. And it was a muck. I mean, amazing films, but, like, that's a thing, like, no one really thinks about. Is like, the dad was not the dad in part two because and that's why he's upside down. It's to hide his likeness. Yeah. But the lawyers didn't see that one coming. It's like, <laughs> no, we've protected your likeness. There's no way out of this. That's right. Spielberg's just too smart. It's like, pop him upside down. You know, I don't even know how much the directors got into that, really. I wonder if it's like producers. I'm sure the director's involved, but like he probably advocated for this. But yeah, it was a big deal. Sorry, I can't give the full, full story because I'm not that version of it, but I'm familiar with the the controversy and the, and the whole situation. So the actor is Crispin Glover, George McFly being his name in the original. Now, when you say the dad is upside down, I haven't seen Back to the Future 2 in a long time. What exactly do you mean by that? Is he literally upside down in the shot? Well, you remember they go to the future in part two. They literally yeah. go to the future because they went to the past in part one. It's called Back to the Future. It's like the weirdest thing, right? They went back to the future. Right. They went literally back after they went to the future from going back to the past. The future's in the forward, so how can you go back in it? So in part two, they literally go into the future, and I believe they go to our time frame. Like, it was like 2015 or something like that. Yeah, 2015. Which was, you know, obviously not now, but it was recently now. They went to the future, but it's the past. Right. And uh, and so in that future, the dad was upside down because he'd hurt his back. And, like, this thing he was using was something to, like, make his back better. Okay. And his hair was upside down. He kept flipping it. And, yeah. So. He was floating around upside down. Because you can do that in 2015. I remember the hoverboard. I remember the, the tiny pizza that gets huge. Always wanted one of those. I figured we'd have them by now. But maybe, like, physics or something. Laws of the universe. Can't do it. Sports Al- Almanac was pretty cool. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah that was pretty that's cool. That's a cool idea. I want one but of those. Biff. And Biff got it, didn't they? And we all know what happened there. Yeah, and he got rich. He did, actually. He did quite well and became president. It says here, Crispin Glover, as you said, Jared, was a joy to watch, but was absent from the sequels. What happened? And this is Collider. We'll throw this in the show notes. And it just, uh, this post explains it, but there's tons of YouTube videos on it and whatnot. So So, uh, right now I'm thinking back to that spoiler horn I just wasted here, because is the part that you spoiled is that he's upside down in part two? (laughs) (laughs) Is that a major plot point? I can't remember. No, I think he means he spoiled the fact that it's not, everyone's probably tuning into Back to the Future 2. All the kids are on the way to see it. They want to see Crispin and they're going to be bitterly disappointed. Okay, fair enough. Well, we had the horn, Jared. You know, like any new toy, we got to play with that toy. So, you know. I know. As soon as you said spoiler, I was like, hold on, I got to push this button. That's the spoiler horn. Horn away. 
I'll try and spoil some things too. Okay, well, you do naturally quite well. Thank you. Just a quick question then. Do you own my likeness because of this? Like, well, how does this work? Because um, you have to have permission to put this video out. Right, right, but you gave us permission, do you not? What, for this likeness? We didn't ever talk about it, did we? <laughs> and how alike does it have to be? That's actually a really good point because there's a lot of people who work in the, I would say, recording generally space, you know, video to audio. And you really should have a an agreement of some sort or a lightness agreement, like how it will be used. I mean, that's, that is the right way to do things, honestly. Right. Yeah, because you could put me on t-shirts or underwear. And now that you say it, I mean, it would be smart of us as a business to do that, but it would be obvious. So no, we don't, but you know. Yeah. You could sell Matt Riot underwear and I would have to use my likeness off this. Do you know what I mean? Sell hundreds and thousands of copies, not copies, but editions. And I get, I see none of that. Right. Um, underwear, maybe not. I would say diapers. We'll probably put your likeness on diapers. Oh, or depends. That would be a really good line. It depends. Tech diapers for when you're a 10X developer. Well, this is what I'm here to talk about today. There you go. No, it's Matt depends, Jared. Matt depends. Matt does depend. Well, he depends on many things. Yeah. Mostly himself when he's coding, because Matt here, turns out, we found out in the interim. By the way, Matt, we have to thank you for helping us sort of give birth to this new show, because... Last time you were on the Changelog podcast, which you're not technically on right now, but you are technically on right now. It's kind of like Back to the Future in the past. Oh my gosh, what's canon? Everything's canon. Oh no. Yeah, so watch what you say. Okay. This, is, this is complicated. How many timelines has Changelog got then? How, how is this not on Changelog? <laughs> it is. This is a new flavor of the Changelog called Changelog and Friends. This is a talk show. See, we invite you on just to talk. That's right. Shows our lack of judgment, but here you are nonetheless, and you're on our prototype show. It was called Get With Your Friends, and we did a little bit of prototype. Did you know that we were testing you? We were testing things out when we invited you on that day? No. Was I just a guinea pig? Did you own my likeness? We did. We put it out there. I don't know if we owned it, but we certainly used it. And, you know, it turns out people actually enjoyed that episode. Oh, nice. Yeah, that was strange. So we thought, wow, maybe we're on to something here. So we invited you back. Yeah. How many enjoyed it? 31,000. Wow, at least 31,000 by our CMS is tracking, which is mm. is missing about 10%, would you say, Jared? About 10%, maybe 12 or 15% tracking elsewhere? Yeah, but 13 comments on the discussion thread, which is a good number of comments. And this this gave us confidence to do this show again. And uh, so here we are. When we invite you back, you actually confess to us that you think you're a 10x developer. And you wanted to talk about it on the show. Tell us more. Tell us more. Well, this is the, a lot of people think 10X developers are mythical, like Australians. I haven't really got time to get into it now, but there's a lot of evidence that Australia is not real. Um, what? But this is real. I'm here to tell you that 10X developers do exist. I happen to be one of them. I'm coming to just admit that now and just be honest about it. And also come and just share 10 simple tips to be a 10X developer. Okay. Just give it away for free. So first of all, is it possible to ascend this hill or are you born 10X or not? Like, are you just a rare unicorn or can is this, do Adam and I have a chance? Yeah, that is a great question. The thing is, whatever the truth is, you could never have the position that, oh, I can just not be something that you just never should have that position about yourself. So think pos positive thinking. Yeah, I think so. So I think you have to work from the assumption that, you can X up your dev and become some of the higher X's. You know, it doesn't have to be 10. There's, you know. Right, maybe you only get to like 7.5X, but you're trying. Yeah, that would be amazing. That's cool with me. I'll take that. All right, let's hear some of these 10 tips to be 10X. Well, just before I start, I will just say, will you accept my cookies? You have to accept <laughs> cookies. No. <laughs> can I select certain ones? I'll take all your cookies, Matt. Just the required ones. Oh, no, you're not going into the advanced. You're not those... Guys, who goes in those advanced settings of the cookie pop-up? Every time. I'm relentless. <laughs> Do you really? No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Spends hours. I just accept them. I'm just so tired of them. I'm like... You looked so serious that I thought, maybe Adam is the kind of guy who goes in and just selects... The occasional website. My default is reject all. You're going to ask me again next time anyways. Yeah, well, they can't remember, can they? Because you've rejected the cookie. That's why they can't remember, Jared. Stack Overflow is relentless, man. No, actually, I accepted... No, I learned. I, I machine learned it. Stack Overflow. I accepted over and over again, and I got sick of it. I'm not going to keep accepting if you're not going to remember my setting. Like, that's what a cookie is for, you fools. 
Yeah, what's wrong with them? <laughs> Why are they doing that to us? So I've been rejecting ever since. I've been wondering, like, if this is like an MK Ultra thing mm. with this accepting of the cookies. Yeah, they're just like seeing how much they could push you. Yeah. How often can we get them to truly accept every single time they come here? Because like you have to, right? It winds me up. We need to get rid of it. You guys did it, didn't you, Matt? Wasn't it your fault? Yeah, it was the EU, yeah. Well, technically not Matt's fault then, right? Well, I blame Matt, really. <laughs> Do you still have to accept the cookies? Well, I would, I'll tell you, it just gets in your way of life. And like, I'm in a hurry. I'm trying to find out if it's normal to say cheers, mate, to a cash machine. So I haven't got time for clicking and never mind all the advanced settings and things. Yeah, so I'd say get rid of them. But anyway, you've accepted the cookies, so I can continue. And I will just say, number six is going to blow your mind. No, we rejected them. We accepted the ones we had to have only, to be clear. So be clear, please. You know, I've worked in tech a long time. I know exactly what a cookie is. And I, even I don't know what they are. What, what's going on? <laughs> Accept what? I know you're not being honest right now because you're a web developer. Surely you know what cookies are. What are you on about? Why do we have to click accept all the time? I don't know. It's a good question. Must have consent. Just like with your lightnings, Matt, we can't just assume you want to give it to us. We have to explicitly say, yes, you can have it and you can use it. Yeah, but don't put me on pants. Underwear, not pants, underwear. Underwear. And we have a perpetual worldwide non-rescindable license. It's your license to put you on Matt Depends, which is a future product coming to merch.changelaw.com. Matt Depends. I like that product. I suspect Depends is a brand of adult diapers. Is that? <laughs> it is, yes. Yeah, but not Matt Depends. That, then that's a really good joke. Then credit where credit's due. That makes sense. Once I've figured out that it's the brand. A US audience is going to love that from the beginning. So They're going to love it. Oh, you weren't getting the joke for a bit there. I'm sorry. No, but I like it. You know, the best jokes is when the person later on tells you they like it, you know? Oh, yeah. They, they don't laugh at it, but like that joke was good. Always feels great. The audience is like, can you just get to those 10 tips, please? I'm here for the tips. I'm here for the tips. Yeah, yeah. Here come the tips. It's a good point. Just the tips. Okay, uh, number 10. Most developers don't know about this one simple trick. Coffee. It's delicious, healthy alternative to brushing your teeth. <laughs> That's the first tip. Kick the day off with a cup of coffee. That's number 10. I mean, obviously, they're going to get better. Can you be specific with the coffee? Can you tell me, like type of bean, regions from, what was the elevation it was grown? Was it in the shade? Was it in full sun? Was it... Do these things matter? You know, it does, Jared. Very much so. Well, I don't know. I'm asking Matt for my 10X. I'm just here for the 10X. I don't really care about the details. So if I have to drink coffee, fine. <laughs> but does it matter? Do I have to go to Nicaragua specifically to get my beans? I feel like you should feel happy about it. So don't buy them from... Like, don't make sure they're not doing any evil. You can't have evil beans. You can't start the day with evil beans. Okay, no evil beans. Taking notes. What are evil beans? You know how you have like, they talk about them being ethically sourced. These are like blood diamonds? Exactly. You don't want any blood beans. No blood beans. All right. Fair. There is a truth to that. Yeah. Uh, fair trade. Fair trade. Exactly. You want to make sure everyone's getting a piece of the pie, coffee pie. So yeah, a cup of coffee in the morning. That's simple. That's how I start. So that's number 10. Are these in order of importance or are you building to something here? I'm building up to number one, actually. I can't wait for number one. If number six is going to blow our mind, I can't wait for number one. Yeah, but hang on, on those lists online, when it says, oh, here's the top 10 things, like number six is going to blow your mind. Why is it not number one then? If it's that good, it's going to blow our minds. Why is it number six? And why do you bother putting anything before it? Our minds are blown. Maybe they know that they're not going to have you for number one, but they might get you to that second page, right? Mm -hmm. That's literally it. They're just like, just stay to number six and we'll get a bit. <laughs> and we'll be happy. You. Yeah, we'll get our clicks, you know? And we can justify that our existence making these horrible websites. All right, let's hear number nine. Okay, number nine, standing desk. I got that one on lock. Yeah, a lot of people sitting down a lot. Also, don't just stand up forever. You've got to have the variety. It's all about variety. You can either get your desk that moves up and down, the standing, that's the sort of classic one. Or if you want to splash out, you can actually get your desk stationary and have your floor go up and down. I like that And idea. so that's, yeah, and that's like, if you really want to, do it. That's how you do it. Go big. But yeah, standing desk. Change of scene, change of position. So are each of these a multiplier? So if I got coffee and standing desk, now I'm at 2x or 3x? Could be, yeah. I think probably it does work like that just for the sake of this format. Good, because I'm two for two right here. I'm feeling pretty 10x so far. Keep going. Yeah. Technically, you're uh, 1.5, Jared. Okay. Well, I'm no mathematician. Well, because you stand only. He just said you can't stand only. You have to have variety. Well, although you do have a couch near you, so that is your non-standing so i give you a 1.75 then i'll take it keep going matt 
I thought you meant that Jer- he squatted all day. I was going to say, well, that's impressive. Half standing, half sitting. That would be impressive. Like a wall sit, just hold that for the day. No big deal. What's next? Number eight, be okay for things to not work out. You know, a lot of things slows us down. We really want to make sure we're not wasting our time. That itself can become a waste of time where you get obsessed with trying to make sure you're not going to make a mistake. And sometimes you've got to just jump into it. At some point, you've got to jump into it. And usually the sooner the better. But that definitely does, depends. Matt depends. Coming soon from Changelog. Is that synonymous with move fast and break things? Is that kind of like, is it similar grounds? Yeah, it is. It's about be okay to make mistakes. And just leave them there too, right? Just keep going. (laughs) Well, if you've got a reason to fix it, though, that's great. That means you've got a reason to fix it. Like... Is that like job security? Like you have more work to do now. So that's great. No, I just mean you get validation of the project. It's like if someone's complaining, I'm trying to do this thing with your, this thing you've just built and released very quickly, uh, but I can't do it. That is great. It's a good point. You have to use the software to find the bugs, right? I mean, you don't care about the bugs if the software's not useful or being used. Or use the bugs to find the software. Chew on that for a minute. That's true. Yeah. All right. Number seven. Jared's like, I'm over this one. Seven, please, go. This one has almost made too much sense. I feel like it needed to be more ridiculous. But not on, It's not a list of unpopular things to do to be a 10x. I didn't say that. Oh, fair enough. Number seven, new keyboard. Treat yourself. See, now we're back on ridiculous. I appreciate this one. Some people have other interests. Some people have got kids. Some people have even got friends. A few. A few people have friends. But for the rest of us mechanical keyboards um, or just a different keyboard like it's the thing you interface with the most physically Mm -hmm. mix it up again it's about variety if you can have a few that you cycle through how many i mean i've got too many now it's becoming weird yeah i need help you name names um i just got a keychron q9 it's got a cool yellow escape key and a yellow return key or enter oh it's wired though it has a wire mat that's not 10x at all. Wires are not 10x. They slow you down. Spoiler alert. Well, unpopular opinion, get the song on because I don't like wireless keyboards. I might take the opposite on that. I like wireless. I hate wires. That's too popular. All right, Matt. So I'm waiting. Here it is. Number six is going to blow our minds. Six, go. Write tests first, baby, and get good at it. Mm. Writing tests after is horrible. You're writing them first, you're motivated, you get better results, you do. And they're done when you're finished. You don't then have this chore hanging over you. How does that possibly make you move faster? Well, it does for me. I don't know. But genuinely, like, it's about clarity of thought and it's about validating things as you go. It's probably like there's a bit more friction, but it's really healthy friction. So maybe it, there's a bit of, like, if you just didn't have any tests at all and you're just knocking something out as a prototype. In a way, that's kind of different. Like, in that case, I sometimes do do that. But if it's something that I expect to have a life and is going to exist properly, I'll TDD it as much as I can, baby, because I, I like the things it forces you to think about. Have you tried test only? Well, and just get chat GPT to write the code. I didn't say anything about code. I just think test only development would be faster, technically. So you're just writing tests? Yeah, man. Okay. really fast compared to everybody else. Is being 10x about speed or capability? It's got to be productivity. It has to be, right? That's the whole point. You're 10x more productive. Well, you said that how is that faster? So you were implying speed because faster. So how do you really classify what a 10x engineer slash developer is? Or like what makes, what specifically is it? Is it about speed? Is it about getting more done in less time? Is it about better software faster? Is it about shipped faster is it about users revenue faster like at what point is it a 10x thing i think that's a really good question and there are probably people out there that made the same mistake i made when i originally heard this term because i originally thought it was 10 eggs like people ate 10 eggs you know like you get these tech eggs. bros that have these get out of here matt like really weird things so it's like oh he's a 10 eggs developer like in rocky where he drinks the eggs in the morning does he train yeah just drinking eggs down and what do you want salmonella i know did they not have it then? Maybe they hadn't discovered it. Or is he just too strong? But even Salmonella's like, yeah, I'm not even taking this guy on. Or just he just considers it part of his training. Like his body just has to overcome it. I'm sorry. I have to do this prompted. He's back, Jared. He's got his guitar real close. Do a song, Matt. Ten eggs developer right now. Go. Ten eggs developer. Ooh, that's a good prompt. You're prompt engineering over there, Adam. And throw Matt Depends in there too somewhere. 
I'm like Howard Stern right now. That's what Howard Stern does with his musical guests. He's like, just go. Give it to me. Don't. If you want your coat to really have good legs, you gotta wake up and drink ten eggs. Just drink them down. All those eggs, it's gross, I know. He's giving you salmonella. Ten eggs. Nice. Very good. Okay, so we've established 10x really translates to 10 eggs. No, no, no. That's just what I originally thought, though, but that was wrong. Okay. So actually, don't don't listen to that song that we just did. Don't learn from it, definitely. Yeah, that's just for fun. Not even. That's motivation. Not even. You need the 10x motivation. You listen to 10 eggs, the song, and you get going. Oh, so to be a 10 eggs developer, you have to listen to the 10 eggs song. That makes sense. You can have one of those 10 eggs days, aren't you? You're like, you're waking up, you're like, and by the way, if you're vegan, you know, you can just have oat milk. Oh, gosh. Did you hear about wood milk? <laughs> wood <laughs> milk? <laughs> Maple syrup. Not even kidding you. Are you guys familiar with Aubrey Plaza? Yes. Uh, no. She's an actress. Oh, I thought it was a place. She was in Parks and Recreation. That's one of her, you know, come out, uh, I guess. Sounds like a place as well. Sounds like a park. That's where she was really found and like discovered as a great actress. This is an impression of my boss, Leslie Nope. Women should do everything. Check out my four color pen. Hey everybody, listen up while I talk about some really, really important stuff. Parks, 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 oh. Michelle Obama parks, get penguins parks, sugar parks. <laughs> <laughs> she got me. She got me good. She got me. She's a comedian too. She's very comedic. She's also got a very serious face on her. And so you mentioned oat milk and as a making fun of everybody who's drinking macadamia nut milk and oat milk and almond pick milk whatever you can get milk out of milk, almond milk, you know? Mm -hmm. She said that uh, she was revolting and going, there's all these woods around her. She wanted to get milk from the woods. Now let's take a look at how wood milk is born. Not born, exactly. More like squished into a slime that's legal to sell. And so she would chop down the tree. It's a whole thing. You should check it out on YouTube. It's wood milk. Hilarious. Hilarious. But it's making fun of everybody who's drinking almond milk and oat milk and whatnot. Plant-based milks. I think it was actually a campaign for milk. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, well, just to mock people who... Well, it's supposed to be tongue-in-cheek and funny, but also, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there were people that were offended by it because she's mocking them, but... yeah. It was not meant to be not offensive. It was slightly offensive for sure. Yeah, yeah. But you've got to be able to take a joke, haven't you? And I mean, I drink oat milk. And if I got angry every time someone made a joke about me drinking oat milk, which is all the time, actually, and I am getting sick of it, people on the street shouting. When I've got people on the street shouting at me about it, how do they even know I'm having it? What does it sound like? They're like, hey, Matt, you, you drinking that oat milk again? <laughs> That's <laughs> what they say to you. That doesn't really hurt, does it? Oh, it's just oat boy, oaty, oaty McOat face. Is he drinking oat milk? Go get him! Is this why that those people in Berlin kept yelling at you, wanker, because you were drinking oat milk on the streets? Wanker! They did shout that a lot. That could be why. Now we have a reason. Up next, it's number five. This is a match made in heaven. These are two in one, really. So it's five is two. Five is kind of two in one. So it's five and four together. They're in brackets. Yeah, they're together. It's not five and four. It's a tale as old as time. It's the classic pen and paper. Pencil if you like, but pen and paper. Material, actual, away from screens. Uh, use that to jot down ideas, write down uh, insults. If, you want, if you're getting angry at a couple of, say you're doing a podcast with a couple of people and they're really annoying you, write down your feelings. Don't let them come out. Write them down just to get them out. And then you can carry on being nice to them both. Mm. Can you give me an example of, you know, journaling for you to be an Xer? Would you say like uh, all this... This fump thing has just really got me upset. What are you writing? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is it diary entries? Is that what we're doing? When you write about things like, yeah, that you're upset about with your computer. Isn't it mostly just like reinforcement? Like you're like, you can do this, Matt. You can be more productive. Remember the time that you coded real fast? You are the best, really. You are 10x. You are 10 eggs. Play some sad music over this and I think the listeners will get a sense of this. Dear Diary, today was not an easy day. I'm afraid the compiler complained 
that I didn't have a semicolon in a really specific place. And like, it's the computer. So it knows, it's the one telling me that it needs a semicolon there. Put it there, diary. It should just put it there itself. I'm livid. I didn't have my coffee this morning because I was ill prepared. And I'm worried about my likeness ownership on different (laughs) streams I've been on. See you later, diary. Bye. Uh, Of all the people to be worried about their likeness, Matt, I just don't think that'd be something that you should be concerned with. But you are onto something, though. I I agree with this. Smarter compilers would be nice, right? Like, if it's wrong, just can you just correct it for me and tell me that you've corrected it for me and then make my life happier? Don't yell at me. You know, and you're you're my minion. Do the minion work. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it should be like, sort it out. Do it yourself. That's right. That reminds me of the fly control command line tool. Fly. When you type fly whatever, whatever, if there's a new version, it says update available. To update, type fly version upgrade. And I always wonder, why would I type upgrade if I want to update? Shouldn't I just type update? (laughs) Inconsistencies. Hold on to that thought. We'll come back to it with developer experience because that is annoying. Also, just go ahead and upgrade for me. I'm fine, you know? Yeah, but I still like it's quite a good experience, quite a good developer experience, isn't it? Telling you that in that moment when you're using it, there's an update. Quite nice. And then you got to type upgrade? I mean, you can manage that, mate. It's a completely different word, man. It's the same with homebrew. Homebrew, you don't update things, you upgrade things in homebrew. I think we should introduce our friends to a thing called an alias. Like when I type fly version update, it should just be like, oh, he meant upgrade because this command doesn't do anything. But it's very close to that command that does exactly (laughs) what he was thinking. Let's hold on to this for our later discussion. Matt, number four. Jeez. Number four, I don't know why. I've just written down water. I think it's because you need it, otherwise you might die. Water. It's clean. It's cold. And that's what I call high quality A2. These are amazing tips. I mean, this is like a... Uh, If I was a survivalist out in the woods, these are things I would do. I would journal and drink water and 10 eggs in the morning. So is this 10x anything? You can just 10x anything? No, No, this is definitely developer focus. Some of these would be different if I was doing it for survivalists. Half of them are not. It sounds like 10x survivalist. Uh, Yeah, half of them are just like random advice for anybody who's going out into the woods. Be okay for things to not work out. At least with survivalists, you know how what a 10x means, right? Because they're just going to survive 10 times longer. That's right. With developer, we have these questions about what 10x means, but with survivalists, Oof. it's quantitative. Right. I've watched enough, Joe. I would say survivalist is not how long you survive, it's how much you thrive. Because surviving is not thriving, you know? <laughs> that's a thrivist. Completely different thing. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. Thrivalists. I'm always in more of a thrivalist. Yeah, the thrivalists are the next level survivalists. They're the ones that are like, they're not just going out there to survive. They're, they got, they're out there to live. That's right. Yeah. They're stranded, but they've got like a four pack. Do they have shoes on? Are they wearing underwear made by themselves? Do they have hats? <laughs> yep. Adam asked the hard questions. Do they have hats? Well, do they makeshift themselves a hat because they're walking in the sun? They're doing distance. Is that thriving or is that surviving? I would say so, yeah. I mean, because if you've seen enough of these shows, you see people who are like really sucking wind. Yeah. And they're basically eating lizards, man. Or worse. They're eating lizards and crying and wishing for, you know, some shade. Then somebody else has got clothes manufactured. They got makeshift shoes. They got a, a an entire campus they've built because they're just thriving. And they've got not just meat, but a stockpile of jerky because they've been smoking it. Everybody, meanwhile... Their competition is drinking wood milk. That's right. And that's yeah. not thriving. That's survival. They're also trying to get the milk from the wood. I think maple syrup could be, it's not milk, but it's interesting. That's sap. You think it tastes good or what's your point? Yeah, it tastes all right, yeah. All right, what's our next number? Let me guess, let me guess. Breathe. Oh, no, I forgot that one actually. But you should do that. Yeah. I didn't put it on the list, but this isn't like instructions. You know, these are just things I do. These are 10 tips to be a 10X developer. Yeah. And number four was water. Yeah, it just says just written down water. I mean. <laughs> All right, let's get through this. <laughs> I think you need it, though, don't you? It is necessary. It's implied, though, really. Not, not on Matt's list, it's not. It's explicit. That's how important it is. But then you do bring a good point about breathing. What was three again? Is it really breathing? <laughs> we have number three. Gosh. He won't reveal number, his top three. Matt Ryer's top three survival tips. Okay, it's the top three now, not survival tips. These are thrivalists if you want to be an X10 developer. Number three, keep things simple. 
but really actually do keep things simple. One of the things that slows us down, this is a real one. One of the things that really slows us down because things are complicated to do and we build a lot of that complexity ourselves. So avoid doing it for as long as you can and take on the hit later of having to go and refactor stuff because you do it in a, when you're in a position where you really understand it. Mm-hmm. It's not to say don't design and obviously there's, you know, loads of things that you can move at the speed of light before. But when it comes to actually doing things and building it and making decisions, like about what dependencies you bring in, about what packages you're using, what features you're going after, like what problems you're trying to solve, the more complex that is, the harder everything is. So there's a genuine tip for, for how to do it. It's really about focus. Keep things simple. Don't overdo it. Don't let this scope creep. If it's going to creep, creep it smaller if you can. Mm, small creeps are better than big creeps. Yeah, they're easier to deal with. That one I can agree with. Water, I can agree with, but it's sort of implied. Yeah. Yeah, this is a good one. Pen and paper, you don't agree with. Do you write things down when you're sketching ideas, like if you're thinking about something technical? Oh, yeah. Uh, not writing, though. Usually it's a lot of, I mean, yeah, digital notes are better for me. So I take lots of notes in different places, stuff yeah. like that. So I write down, I got an idea page just in Obsidian. It's just full of ideas. Right. Like what? Just ideas for like how to grow, how to do different things, fun things to do. Open up the idea page. Let's read them all off. Let's hear some ideas. Gosh. All right. Matt and I can critique your ideas here. This will be fun. We should be angel and devil, Jared. One of us should be. Oh, okay. But Adam can't know which is which. Okay. And we'll switch each time around. Yeah. So don't look Adam at the screen. Jared and I will decide. Okay. Jared, I'm going to point to the devil. Okay. Point up or down. I'm going to point to the devil. (laughs) No, point up or down. Down is devil. Okay, me. No, well, yeah, but that's revealed it. <laughs> well, <sighs> if you're pointing. Yeah, but you can't see. I'm doing it so only visually you can see. You can't hear right it. right there. Yeah, but close your eyes, Adam. We're going to just decide. Right, Jared, what's the up and down system? You can't change the system halfway through. <laughs> the devil is down and the angel's up. Okay. These are all bad ideas. Holy moly. Let me get to my good ideas page here. Oh, he's his own devil. All right, let's do good cop, bad cop then, if we want to leave theology out of it. Okay. Point at the good cop. Yeah. Okay, ready? Yeah. Got it. Well, these ideas are pretty sparse. Okay, maybe I do need paper and pen. So some of these ideas are a little old. Uh, they seem to be pretty terrible ideas. I'm kind of embarrassed to even share really any of them. <laughs> now that they're coming up to scrutiny, maybe. Well, pick one that you like. Well, the one I really liked was, um, these are all really bad ideas. <laughs> no such thing. <laughs> no such thing. Let's hear it. I would say, I'm going to start with the, what I think might be the best idea in here. And Jared, I shared this with you before. But we, you know, this is sort of against the grain because we're trying to like keep it simple too with our network uh-huh. and not grow by too many podcasts. So I thought if ever we did a gaming podcast or a gaming friendly podcast or a casual pod about games and gaming, mm-hmm. it'd be cool if it was called High Score. Hmm. I'm loving this idea. It wasn't too much. I was like, that's a cool name. If we did this, a show on games or casual gaming, because I'm not a gamer per se. I've played games, I play games, and I will play games, you know? (laughs) But he's not a gamer. Not like, you know, Mike McQuaid, for example, he seemed to be way more into, like, A-list games. Well, there's, like, hardcore gamers. Yes, Casual gamers. There's, like, ex-gamers, aspirational gamers. You guys sure say gamers a lot for a couple of guys who claim not to be gamers, (laughs) guys. I didn't make any claims over here. Are you a gamer, Jared? I like games. Yeah. Okay, likes games. I'll just write down likes games. Here's another one I want to do at some point. And this is kind of like people have done this one, though, so it's, I probably wouldn't do it. And I wrote this down probably forever ago before people were doing this more often. In particular, Network Chuck, he's done this. He's a coffee guy. Mm. Is it going to be something, 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 that's the tweet? Nope. No, no, not at all. Oh, because that, that's a classic now. Oh, here's an idea. Twitter threads. <laughs> is that it? Did I guess it? No, no, no. It's nowhere near Twitter. It is uh, work with the coffee brand to create a hacker coffee blend. Mm. So, Matt, since you said number one was coffee for you, like this is up your alley, we can call this blend 10X. I'm loving this idea. 10X. Yeah. For developers. We put that in our merch store. It's, you know, we've chosen the, maybe we get a couple different, you know, whatever. It's kind of cool. Maybe we could find a doctor to actually claim that it somehow makes you a better developer. I mean, we won't be able to find one of them in the UK, but definitely in the US. <laughs> Yeah, you pay them enough, they'll say anything. There's scientific (laughs) proof about caffeine inhibitors and stuff like that with your brain. We could have 10 out of 10 developers recommend. 
you know. Yeah, exactly. We just ask 10 and any that don't say so, we kick them out. So this one's actually in the works uh, to some degree, this idea. Create coding albums slash mixes with Breakmaster, which we've done. We're kind of doing that behind the scenes. To put on YouTube, like music people that, that people can program to, like a 10-hour a mix, just a, a jam session, and have many of them, you know, many tracks. And Breakmaster is working on this, but that wasn't my idea, Bug, and we're working on it. Could be called Coda. Coda? Yeah, it's like the end bit of a song. Well, you know, just one idea, pop it on the list. Let me add this here to the list. <laughs> it's unique and different, you know? But no, that's a great idea, because you've got to find to get in your zone, haven't you? And sometimes a way to do that is music. I sometimes listen to French songs because I can't understand what they're saying. And it still sounds beautiful, Mm. but I'm not distracted by it because it just sounds like a nonsense to me. I'm with you. I can't have lyrics while I'm working. Yeah. But I like music. So if it's lyrics in somebody else's tongue that I don't speak, I'm fine with it. Sounds like another instrument. Here's one you actually might like, Jared. I never told you this one. And it's almost good. Fire Jared. (laughs) Am I still the good cop? I can't remember. Yeah, you're a good cop, yeah. I forgot to be horrible. Okay, I have to like this. I'm going to read it verbatim. It's a live page powered by our, in quotes, recommended episodes. So you go there. Why is it in quotes? Because they're not actually recommended? I don't know. I guess it's... <laughs> they <laughs> mean something. It's, it's a... Yeah, it's recommended. Well, these are our recommended, right? Okay, a live page powered by our recommended episodes. So what happens at this page? Right, so you go there. So if you just want to listen to good tracks from us, good episodes... Yeah. Past, present, future. It's a cool looking page. It's got a live radio UI. It's got some soft, cool visuals. It's a streaming text of our news feed, which doesn't exist anymore. Tweets, clips. It's a place to go to to like get good stuff right now. I see. And it's powered by our recommended page. That's a half-baked idea. I often bring half-baked or not well thought through ideas to Jared and together you know, we yin and we yang that thing. Or as they say on Silicon Valley, yin and yan. Right. I like that idea. I think you could also go the other way because there's an audience for those episodes that really don't work. Awkward, argumentative. You know, when it's like, oh, there's a tension oh. or it's just like silence. Do you know what I mean? Like people are just not feeling it or it's awkward, it's nervous. You know, those, those shows. Least recommended. Pop them on. I love those. They're so... Awkward. I can't get enough of listening to them. Is he is he joking with us? I can't tell. Well, he does like uncomfortable things. Oh, they're amazing. I love those embarrassing ones. So I will say this. I'm not going to name the podcast, the episode number, or the guest, but I will say that we have had an episode of one of our podcasts where a single question asked by the interviewer spawned a response that lasted 18 minutes. I know the podcast, not the episode number. I've tried to forget it. So if you like that kind of stuff, go seeking. We'll just have one of those. But could you imagine somebody asks you something and you answer for 18 minutes? That for us is a record. Well, this one we're doing, Jared. This idea here is... The bad show's idea? No, no. This one I'm about to read to you. Oh, I thought you meant this episode was going to be on the bad show idea. Yeah, I was, I was done listening to that, so I was just going to move on. Yeah, Adam, we need a little bell or something when you're switching ideas, because we don't know when one idea starts and the other one ends. Here we go. Changing the idea right now. Bring. This one is yearly plus plus members get tees, which we wanted to do for a while, like special t-shirts. And then also a personal email from one of us and ask them one or two questions, you know, a minute or two answering them, listen, share on Twitter. I don't know. Interact, essentially. Nice. Kind of doing that one. Except for the yearly members getting tees. Talk to your users, basically. I email all of our members. I know. That's why I said that. We're doing this one. We're half doing this one. We, we didn't give them a t-shirt, but... We don't give them t-shirts, but we do give them emails, which are equal value of a t-shirt, I think. Change log plus plus. It's better. I do not disagree. I'm done. That's it. That's the best of the bad ideas. All right. Not so bad. I'm just all self-conscious. I thought there was some good ideas in there. But I am having to say that because Matt made me the good cop, so I was forced to enjoy all of your ideas. Yeah. Give us two, Matt. Give us number two. Okay. Number two just says, if you can't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love anybody else? Oh my gosh, Matt. This is a RuPaul quote, but being polite to people doesn't cost anything. Being nice, being kind. It's a cliche for a reason. Give you a quick example. Recently, I saw a guy outside who was carrying a little bag of poop, but he didn't have a dog around him. I didn't see a dog. Okay. So I was still nice to him, you know, just said good morning. And then I just crossed the road and... Just went a different way. <laughs> this segment on Twitter, or the, 
on YouTube, we're going to put this out. They're going to watch my face react to your number two. And I'm going to be saying, like, my face just is, like, in disbelief that that's number two. Are you saying how Matt reacted to that guy's number two? Yeah, that'd be good, too. That's a good pun. Thank you. No, that's a bad pun. That was an unintended pun. I didn't, that was not intentional. But, yeah, this is, that's that's funny that this is number two and your example is number two. But Yeah, that's a coincidence. Are you being serious, Matt, on this one? About the poo story? No, about this being number two. This is a 10x tip. Yeah. We're almost to number one. Be kind to people. You'd be shocked what you can achieve. Was it dog poo in the bag? Was it? I hope so, Jared. I hope so. So this is about giving people the benefit of the doubt, you know? You're being gracious to this man. Yeah. And assuming that was dog poo. I get it. It's a weird example. I'm not going to lie. It's it's a weird story to tell <laughs> to, th- to just thousands of people. Oh, yeah. We never had to hear that story, but now we all know about it. It's possible he had some go coat in that bag. Oh, come on. <laughs> that wouldn't be poo. If you asked him where he was going, he might even say, Dan Tan, Dan Tan. (laughs) (laughs) He's going Dan Tan. Oh my gosh. Okay. Number one, lots of pressure here. It has to be good. It can't be as bad as number two. Number one, vitamin D. Excuse me? Vitamin D. Take it as a supplement. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Most of the supplements that don't really take... If you're in a country like in the UK in the winter months, you will not get enough vitamin D from the sunlight alone. Right. A lot of people think you can't really get it from the sunlight uh, safely anyway. So supplement seems to be the safest. A lot of people think you can't get it from supplements. Yeah, but do your own research, definitely. But I will concur with this one because um, a lot of people are vitamin D deficient. Yeah. Almost everyone is in modern society because of just modern society. Yeah. And for sure, taking a supplement. Now, I would also say, take it with the vitamin K2. Is that K as well? Vitamin K as well? Uh, no, it's called K2. It's like B12, K2, you know. But hang on, you're not, you're not one of these people that just believes anything, are you? <laughs> like, is it how, I don't know how, how real we should take that. Like, are you reliable? Just objectively. I will just say blanket statement. We do not have medical advice here on Changelog Podcasts. Consult your local doctor. Let me see if I can find the science here. So there's vitamin D. Yeah, here you go. Google this, vitamin D and K2. You Google that and you find what you say. It says, should vitamin D and K2 be taken together? Vitamin D should therefore always be taken in combination with K2 because the vitamins work together to synergistically, I'm not making this up, and ensure that calcium obtained from food is deposited into the bones and not the arteries. It activates the D. Right, hold on. What did you search for, though, Adam? Uh, vitamin D and K2. Well, obviously you're going to find a website that says that. That's what searching is. Well, I know this. This is. I'm trying to find the information. I already know this, though. My, my, my doctor told me this. So I take K2 and vitamin D together. So ask your doctor if that's safe for you. As well as vitamin D. Yeah, vitamin. That's, what I, that's how I say it. How do you say it, Jared? Vitamin. Is you sure you're not just saying it how I've said it, though? Because... I think I was the first one to say this, and I've said it in a British way. (laughs) Oh, I say vitamin, vitamin, 100%. I don't know how else you could say vitamin. But when I'm referring to vitamins, I say vitamin. But when I'm asked how to say vitamin, I just say vitamin. There we go. He's walked it back. I'll tell you how we say it here in Texas. You taking them vitamins over there? (laughs) (laughs) The magic pills? Uh I, here's what I love. Here's what I love is that Matt confidently says that his top tip, his number one tip for being a 10x developer <laughs> is to take vitamin D. And then Adam says, also take vitamin K2. And Matt says, if you believe anything, <laughs> he'll just take anybody's advice on the internet. You, you just gave a top tip there, Matt. Do you think vitamin D is perhaps a safer vitamin to recommend than K2? Or because you haven't heard of K2? Yeah, I, did, I didn't, just haven't heard of that. I just thought it was a movie. Isn't that where they, they get stuck on a mountain? K-9, the the sequel to the K-9 movie. I imagine it's a robot cop who is a dog, and this is the sequel, and it's just called K-2. Too Furious, it's just called Too Furious, because he's just angry. He's not going fast, it's a dog. K-2 Furious, yeah, fair enough. Mm -hmm. All right, well, there you have it. Ten tips. Ten good tips. To be a 10X survivalist. Let's now turn to a new segment that we are testing out. A prototype. We like to use Matt to test different things. This one's called Tool Time. This is where we share tools that we have been using lately or for a long time. They can be critical to our workflows. 
They can be new to us, but we think they're good. We have reasons why we think they're good, and we recommend them to other people if they have similar problems in their lives that these tools could potentially help solve. So, Matt, you're the guest, so you'll go last. No, we'll uh, go ahead and let you go first. Oh, no, last is fine. Tool time. What do you got going? Well, I want to shout out, this is a classic that I think loads of people already use. I use a Go-specific one, but there are this tool in other languages as well. I'm speaking in this abstracted way uh, just to add some drama because it's linting, linting tools. Mm -hmm. I love them. I'm quite pedantic, so I'm very particular. I haven't noticed. Oh, yeah. So I'm quite particular about things. Like if there's a bit of smell in the code, it bothers me. And this is unusual for such a 10Xer as myself because normally... That's the trade-off is like you're just moving really quickly and what you produce isn't really high quality. But actually, uh, yeah, the opposite. Keep it high quality. Linters help you do that. A lot of the Go tools tend to be, they don't have loads of configuration. So, you know, you get a lot of kind of defaults that are pretty sensible as well. Hmm. What all do you think should go into a linter? And how does that compare with Go Fumpt? Is it a linter? Is it just a formatter? Hmm. Are these the same things? Are these different? Yeah, they are. They're subtly different. I mean, Fumpt does focus on literally formatting, and there is a Go imports flavor also, which is does the formatting and fixes your imports, which is really cool. But the linting things are around like if you just have declared things and haven't used them. Actually, in Go, that is an error sometimes. I'll say Go don't let you do that, right? Yeah, but you can still declare like functions that don't never get called and things. That's still valid. Okay. So linters just help you pick up those edges and just keep the quality there. By and large, the advice you get from a linter is pretty sound and worth following. One time it did suggest something that I didn't like, and I did do a PR to remove it, and it was accepted. This was from the Go linter. So sometimes you do have to roll your sleeves up and get the laws changed if something's annoying. Yeah. Is this so that you can move faster when coding and think less about the specific details that a linter can catch for you? Or like, how do you, how do you leverage a linter when it comes to like efficiency? Yeah, it's really just about having that sense of the quality being high. You know, when you have a project and there's loads of warnings and they're just building up and up. Yeah. And you're just like, then what's one more warning mm -hmm. to that? It's nothing. You're going to accept it. If you have no warnings at all from the beginning and no lint errors or issues or whatever, then you see a couple, you're going to want to fix them. And it's just that. It's that. It's funny because I think really to move quickly and to keep moving quickly, your quality has to be really high. This is why I start with tests. Your quality is naturally very, very high. And you've got great test coverage, which also helps you move quickly, of course, because now you can make big changes and you know you haven't broken things that were there before. There's only so far you can get just by prototyping before it reaches a point where it's no longer easy to add things and change things, you know. So yeah, shout out to the linters of the world. You know, we love you. You're pedantic. You're awkward. You know, sometimes we hate you, but just like a lot of people, we love you. Yeah. It's a love-hate relationship. So in Goland, not the IDE, but just in, in, the, land of in Go. the land of Go. Yeah, the land of Go. Yes. Yeah. How do you lint? How do you, what do you do? So you have GoFumpt, it runs maybe on save or on pre-commit hooks and then your linter, run. tell us actually how it works for you in your day-to-day -day work. On save, it does the Go imports formatting. So it fixes any imports and formats the code immediately. So that's the linter that you use is the Go imports plus Fumpt. No, that's not really the linter. That is just doing formatting and import fixing. Okay. Then actually there's a meta linter which you can use from Meta, like from the team at Meta? No, I don't think so. It's just Meta because it runs lots of other linters. It operates in the Metaverse. It's um, it's Golang CI hyphen lint from Golang CI. And we'll put the link in the show notes. I use VS Code and it's just easy to configure. You just turn it on and then you can configure it to say lint the whole package on save. Because sometimes you change things like the linter looks across the whole package. So it's worth running the whole thing each time. And it's just lightning fast. It is on my computer and probably on most computers. Unless you're on a Raspberry Pi and you've got a, I don't know. Are you on a Raspberry Pi? Right now? Yeah, right now, yeah. Not currently. No, not currently. Using right now, recording via Raspberry Pi? That'd be good, wouldn't it? No. 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 Not happening. Okay, well, there you go. Not today. Lint your stuff. 
Do you use linters? I use a roller. That's how I get rid of it. Oh, yeah. There is a linter for Elixir that I set up on our project and I used for a little while and just got too annoying. So I turned it off and I moved on. What kind of things was it saying? Just like, you suck. Why would you do this? Learn this. Yeah, mostly those things. It's not very nice, is it? I just don't want to hear about it when my code's bad. No, mostly <laughs> it was just like its opinions dramatically were different than mine. And it was going to require a lot of configuration. And I probably diverge more from the Elixir kind of conventions just because I work in an isolation a lot and don't have to do too much working together with other people and playing nice. And so it just didn't. It didn't even really bug me. It was just like one more thing that wasn't providing value. And I am a fan of simplicity and yeah. removing things that aren't providing value. Yep. And so I just didn't really get the value out of it that it offered. But I think I'm not against linters by any means. I think I'm with you on pretty much everything you said. I just don't practice what I preach, I guess. Yeah, it's interesting. No, it's a dramatically different opinion to the linter. It's quite an interesting place to find yourself. It reminds me of um, Flat Earthers when they... They, they find themselves with dramatically different opinions about some things. Um, but actually spending some time to learn, you know, about the shape of the earth and other things, like, might be beneficial. But yeah, if it, exactly what happens if it builds up and up and up. Are you a flat earther, Matt? No. You're speaking very, you like, you really know the details here. He brings them up a lot, though. He likes to talk about flat earthers. Yeah. So he's kind of maybe like not a flat earther, but maybe secretly is one. Like, he's kind of obsessed mm -hmm. with the whole concept of it. And so... We're wondering. Well, I, I think it's a conspiracy, like the flat earth. Oh, so you're a conspiracy theorist. About the conspiracies, though. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a meta conspiracy theorist. Oh, so you work for meta and you're a conspiracy theorist. Okay. I think they're all fake, all the conspiracy theorists. With meta linter. Yeah, I use a meta linter, yeah. Okay. There are some odd anomalies. Here's the one thing. Yeah. The one thing, not pro flat earth but this is the one thing they say uh it didn't take long here we go and this is really strange and i'm not a flat earther by any means sure. but i do find this super strange and i would love to find scientific reasoning to why this is and they they say when you fly a plane if it was around a circle or if it was always going that you would always have to be edging down like the plane always flies at the same altitude i just don't understand how that's possible right and i get it because uh, you'd have to fight gravity to go up and but i'd love a scientific reasoning why a plane has to, when it flies across the curvature of the earth, why it doesn't have to nose down. I, I really am just stumped by that one. I don't get it. Hmm. Interesting. Never thought about that. I would think gravity would be the answer, but yeah. I don't know. It does rotate down eventually, right? It must, because it's going over. No, no, no. Like, they keep the same heading. The things that change the rudders, the rudders that change, like, its altitude and whatnot, yeah. don't change to uh, maintain the curvature of the earth. Logically thinking about it, the reason why they don't is probably because gravity. That's what I was thinking. The gravity is the unseen force that forces it to stay where it's sort of at altitude-wise and never have to adjust because gravity is always pushing everything down. Like when you see something fall, it's not because it fell. It's because the air around it was actually lighter. It's interesting how you think about that. Like even a balloon, you know? Right. Well, I don't believe that response because I'm actually anti-grav. I don't know if you guys have heard of this, but, you know. Please explain. Well, I just don't believe in gravity. Okay. Well, before we get onto that, I just the plane is like <laughs> it's like on the atmosphere, like in the atmosphere, if it's like a fluid, the plane like bouncing on that fluid, it probably is wobbling all the time. It's probably something like that. And then I've been on airplanes; they do wobble quite a bit. You know, that's true. Yeah. Well, you shouldn't be flying them, Jared, without your lessons. <laughs> There's no mechanical change for the pilot to say, "Okay, maintain curvature of the Earth." you know, adjustments. There's nothing like that whatsoever. But I do think it's probably gravity and the fact that, you know, air pretty much is... Yeah, like a fluid. It's similar principles to liquid. It's just air. Yeah, I think the atmosphere would have some sort of play on that. Yeah, like a squeeze. Like it's squeezing it. Are you seriously anti-gravity, Jared? No. What do you mean anti-gravity? I just made that up to be silly. Okay, gosh. I was like, man, what kind of person am I dealing with here this whole time? Anti-gravity? If you think about it, in Einstein's universe, the mass is warping space-time, and we're falling because of that. And so it's not really a gravity pulling, but it's more that space-time is warped and we're falling because of that. The other thing, interestingly, is gravity, the word... You know how we say it also to mean like a big situation, like the gravity of the situation? That was the original term. 
And they named the force after that. It was like the gravity of it came later. Hmm. So then that word came first. I thought it was quite interesting. So I actually am anti-grav because I don't believe in big situations. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You're just like trivial, always trivial about everything. Everything's trivial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's nothing to it, but to do it. All right. Tool time. Adam, let's move on to you from anti-grav. Whoa, it's tool time. That's true. We do need a jingle. Should we get Matt to do us a jingle? Tool time. What key do you want it in? Put an A for Adam. Right. Baby's tool time. Baby's tool time. Hmm? Yeah. Not all going to be winners, are they? <laughs> we can workshop that one. Yeah, last time I did it one, Adam, you were like, oh, here's some notes. And then you left it in the podcast. That was true. It's an astonishing choice. Yeah. I think uh, my tool was more of a, a program, I guess, is that kind of thing. And it's oddly 1Password. <gasps> Ooh. And I'm really enjoying keeping my SSH keys in 1Password so that I can biometrically, I use my fingerprint yeah. to get into things. Beautiful. Biometrically. Biometrically. Like other people's houses? What kind of things are you getting into? Well... One machine in particular, my favorite machine because I built it, uh, is called Endurance. Endurance. And this is both our, I guess, initial ZFS box. It serves many purposes, but I built it to be the Plex machine, but it also does a lot of storage because I haven't built the second machine yet. So I've got one, I plan to have two, and the second one will be called something else. But yeah, I'm SSHing in the Linux boxes. Raspberry Pis, legit Linux boxes. Other machines, whatever it might be. Love it. Yep. And I just do not like to uh, type in passwords. And you know, obviously you could do keyless by just putting your key, your public key on the other machine. Right. Pretty easy. That's what I do. But it's even cooler when it's literally you. When you biometrically authenticate the using of the key, which is what it does. One password catches it and says, hey, you're trying to SSH into the machine. Sure, that key pair is over there, but are you you? Because if it is, I'll send the private key and match them up and get the public key from the machine you think you're going to. Good to go. Yep. Biometrically signing into machines with SSH via 1Password. So only you or somebody with your finger can access that. Yeah, it's true. Because this is the thing. A lot of people mistake this. You don't just have one password, do you? You've still got, in fact, you've got loads of different passwords in there. Precisely. You want to clear this up once and for all for the folks at home? For sure, yeah. I mean, I didn't brand the company, but uh, I assume it's because it takes one password to get into the application, one password. Now, this week when we talk about pass keys, actually next week, what, when the heck is this going out, Jared? This goes out on Friday. So it's going out this Friday. Pass keys is already out there in the feed. I could be dead then when this goes out, if I'm not careful. I could be dead too, although it wouldn't go out then. Yeah, we're not promised tomorrow, that's for sure, or even later today. Um... I thought about that when we were on the episode, Jared. I didn't bring it up because it was kind of, you know, anti the goal of the show. I was like, well, what happens whenever, you know, it is a passwordless world? Because at that point, like one password, the brand name is kind of obsolete. It's almost like Facebook and Meta to some degree. My thought on that, because I did consider that, I was like, wow, they're all about passwords and now it's just pass keys. But I think the idea is you still, you lock up all your pass keys with one password. So extra secure. Because you're not going to have a pass key for your one password, are you? It to hold your pass keys, but it doesn't open it with a pass key. Yeah, I think you'd still have to have that something you know, which is... I think you want diversity of authentication yeah. techniques, but nonetheless, 1Password is Adam's tool for tool time. Now, Matt, we do need a, th a jingle for tool time, so I thought maybe you'd give it a go and uh, see if we can get a jingle. Just did one. Oh, I thought we'd give it a second shot, you know? Oh, is it rubbish? <laughs> No, but, you know, iteration and, like, opportunity, you know? Maybe you could, like, come up with something oh, yeah. brand new that was different and we could pick... I do like how Jared came at that as if it never happened. Yeah, I wondered if he was doing that or if he's just forgotten. I think it's both. I thought maybe we'd have a clean edit stop in case you wanted a second shot at it. But I'm mostly just messing with you. Yeah, it's not necessarily <laughs> going to get any better. I'm... <laughs> I just thought I'd give you the opportunity if you wanted to redo. Thank you. No, I think when you listen back, pop a bit of reverb on it, you'll love it. Try this. Get your guitar out, Matt. Let's try this. 
Tools, tools, tools. Tools, tools, tools. Tools time. Let's do it. And then do the Tim Allen grunt, you know, from the old show, Tool Time. Uh, like, do one of those. Well, if you could put one of them on, that'd be great, because I didn't really know that. Okay. Tools. Tools, tools. Tool time, tool time. Come on, let's go. That's better. It's a keeper. Iteration. That's right. It's mother tool. It's iteration. Opportunity. Teamwork. Makes the jingle work. Adam, you said earlier you wouldn't name it that one password if you had your way. What would you name it? Oh, I didn't say I wouldn't name it that. I said I wonder what will happen when there are password lists. But I think Jared cleared it up. So I don't disagree that you would need one password to get into your pass keys when they take over all of passwords. So many words in there. Pass keys, passwords, one password, what? Right, so you're not going to yes and this segment. I'll yes and it. Here's what I would probably name it. Are you ready? Yeah. No passwords. Clever. That's, that could be a competitor. Um, you could also have uh, the pass is always greener on the other side. Yeah, I'd keep working on that one. Pass gas. Gosh, pass gas. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Sorry, I was just going with rhyming words there. Couldn't think of anything else. Pass gas. Pass to the future. That's a good one. Oh, that's good. And then I just wrote down past past. But I don't think that's appropriate. You might need to bleep that. I know it could be like the Tarantino movie title spelling. Let's say it was that. Mm -hmm. Inglorious passwords. Ooh. Oh, there Ooh. we go. Ooh, I like that. But wait, wait, wait. There aren't any passwords anymore. That's right. Exactly. That's the whole point. It has to be past keys. No, you can't. Just keep it. It's too good. Is past keys a good name, do you think, Jared, for this world? Seems like it. Everybody knows what a key is. And they know what a password is. And so it's like, hey, pass keys. Like, okay, I pass my key instead of my word. Yeah, it's clever. Yeah, but also, Inglorious Pastards is a stroke of genius that shouldn't really just move on this quickly from it. It was that good. Do you want us to have a moment of silence? Or what do you want us to do about it? <sighs> yeah, because I think, you know, Adam's done a good sentence, hasn't he? How often does that happen? Let's celebrate it. Yeah. Well. Ta-da. Celebrate okay. it. That's enough. That's enough. If you add all that silence up, it's one minute. All right, Matt, play that tool time jingle. <laughs> Sorry, I was just giving you. <laughs> I was giving you a chance. It's just not happy. Third time's a charm. Okay, so mine is called. Ooh, it's interesting. You can find it at ntfy.sh. I assume it's called ntfy. Ntfy.sh. The tool's called ntfy. That's like nifty. Actually, maybe it's Web 2.0. And they've removed the vowels. They have it right there, Jared. Pronounce notify. Yeah, I think that might be it. So the tool is called notify. <laughs> How is that not nifty? That would be such a good name for this thing. Oh, my gosh. I'm emailing them right now. Well, the T is before the F. That's why, Matt. Well, they did it wrong. They should have done NFTY. Although then they might be associated with NFTs. And maybe they're trying to stay away from that. They could double that up when it fails. Or if it does fail, because it'd be like NFT. Why? Isn't there a song like that? And a T Y. Da, 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 da. No, that's a different song. Yeah, there isn't any songs while I'm trying to email these people. I know the song you're thinking of, though. <laughs> what song am I thinking of? It's a 80s rap song, I believe. U N I E Y or something like that. Something da, 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 da. E -Y -T -T -Y. What is that? Stop singing it, Jared. Listen, I was just listening to the tail end of <laughs> news, and you I'm literally sang it. It's a Whole New World, and then you denied singing a whole new world i'm like you just sang it you've never heard me sing if you think that was me singing what was it then you put out a tune that was synonymous with singing whose voice was making the noise i was mimicking the way the song might go okay it's different like yeah right now i'm just trying to get you guys to understand the song i'm <laughs> referencing but i'm not singing it don't you dare you don't have to be an idiot to go on and sing okay anyways ntfy pronounced notify it's a simple HTTP-based PubSub notification service. This thing is really cool. Mm. It allows you to push notify yourself from disparate scripts, programs, servers, mm. cron jobs, whatever. Yeah, you name it, baby. As simple as a curl command. You know, like just if it has curl on it. Should push that. It's actually quite a hard command to use. Curl? Yeah. Well, you call yourself a 10Xer. <laughs> It's 100% free software. This is really cool. So I've had this problem for years where it's like, hey, I have these different scripts. They're checking on stuff. They're doing stuff. They run at different times. 
mostly they're just quiet. Most of the time I don't care. But when something happens or when something changes, I want to be notified. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how do I just send myself a simple notification? I've used email in the past. Email is not simple to do from like random scripts and it has gotten harder and harder. I've used Twitter in the past. I used to have like just a private Twitter bot that I could just publish to because their API was so awesome back in the day where you could just post a tweet to a private feed and then subscribe to that. Mm -hmm. These things are all pains in the butts. And so the cool thing about this one is like no sign up, no login. You just pick a unique string as your key and you like post to that endpoint. Mm. And then you download the app, Android, app, you know, iOS, what have you, run it on your desktop. And you just subscribe to that particular endpoint. And whenever it posts, it just push notifies your phone. As simple as curl. I mean, it's super cool. It's really nifty. It's notify. Of course, you can get more fancy and there's payment stuff and you can have sign-ins and more security. And there's all sorts of features. It's built by, I believe, one person. Philip C. Heckle. Yeah. And so I want to get him on an interview and talk to him about how it's all built out and stuff. Just because it's one of these things where I think he's really, for me, drilled some key aspects of developer experience where I'm like, I started using it. It just worked. I can say some other things about the way it works that I think plays into that, but I just want to open it up for you guys to talk about this notify.sh. Pretty cool tool. What do you think? I think if you came on the show, there would be one word I would associate with it, Jared. Uh, when Philip comes on in song form, I would say U N I T Y. Ah, oh, that's it. He found it. Mm-hmm. Q Queen Latifah. But don't you be calling me out my name. I bring rap to those who disrespect me like a dame. That's why I'm talking. One day I was walking down a block. I had my cut off shorts on, right? Cause it was crazy. Hot. I walked past these dudes when they passed me. One of them felt my booty. Yeah, was Queen Latifah. Nasty. Okay. What year was that? Ah, oh, gosh. I mean, she was. Oh, I thought you still had it open. Never mind. Not a big deal. I do. I don't know what year it is, though. It doesn't say that. 80s for sure. I mean, when she was rapping. Late 80s, maybe. Early 90s, potentially. Matt, do you know the song? No, I don't know that song. You were around. 1993. Okay, there you go. Should we put it in the show notes? U-N-I-T-Y is a song by American hip-hop artist Queen Latifah from her third studio album, Black Rain. That's R-E-I-G-N. Oh. Like the queen she is. Get it? That's oh, because she's the queen, isn't she? Yeah. Uh, is she? Could we do have a monarchy? Is she actually... It's treasonous to say that if you're not, I think. Is she actually a monarch? Well, you can take that up with Queen Latifah. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. What is Queen Latifah's real name? Oh, Queen Latifah. Double bluff. That's really her name. That's my final answer. Lock it in. I don't think it's known by the public. I heard this recently. No. Oh. oh. So you don't know what her name is? I don't know her name. No, but I don't think many people do if they do. They must know her personally. You teed it up like it was trivia for us. Her name is Dana Elaine Owens. Born March 18th, 1970. That's her real name? Just like that one Google away? Yeah. So, dear listener, I would not eat K2 if I were you at this point. I would avoid that <laughs> with my vitamin D. Uh, read the research, okay? Yeah, do your own research, but not like... I did. It was one Google away. Her Wikipedia page says Dana Elaine Owens. No, I mean the research about the vitamins... I don't want to be liable for this. Well, Dana, good job being a, a queen and a Latifah. We love your music. It's amazing. Yeah. I recall listening to Queen Latifah way back in the day, man. Yeah, for sure. U-N-I-T-Y. That's the unity. It's the best. And so Philip will come on and unify our, our minds around <laughs> Notify and not Nifty. So, Jerry, when you use this tool, like... Not Nifty. Give me an example recently of how it's useful for you. Like, what were you doing that you needed this? Give me, like, a the DevX version of how this worked out for you to be a solo dev, get in this feedback loop. Yes. So I guess shout out to our Slack community who pointed this tool to me. I did put out some posts on socials like, hey, what's a good way to just send yourself a push notification from a script nowadays? And there's another one called pushover.net that I think Lobsters uses for their community push notifications. Also a good name, Pushover. Yeah, I think Pushover looks cool as well. Really just the one that got me was, oh, no sign up, just post to the endpoint. It's like, that's cool. No auth. I don't have to worry about credentials and like a, even like an auth header or anything. I just post to an endpoint. So like that's easy for you to just play with. My initial use case for this was I have a, I'm on the uh, Unify networking things and I use Next DNS, which is another cool tool that I'd love to do a show on here at some point. Next DNS is the new firewall for the modern internet. This is like having a Raspberry Pi as a service. 
mm. where they run all the things and they manage the lists and they add on features. Uh, lots of really cool stuff and super cheap. It's like 20 bucks a year to have that as a service. But you have to point your Dream Machine Pro, if you're on this networking setup I have, that's like my router. I have to point it at their DNS to distribute their DNS to my network, which works great. You just install their little command line tool onto your Unify or onto your UDM Pro, and it grabs the DNS correctly, and it uses Next DNS as DNS instead of Google or Cloudflare or whatever else you'd be using your local ISP. And it uses that to block ads, trackers, you can have privacy, you can have security, blah, 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 all the DNS level. The issue with it is, is that sometimes my UDM Pro would just stop using their DNS. Oh, why? I don't know why, actually. I think maybe a software update that like disables the command line, because uh, the way you install it, you just SSH in, and then you install their little deal, and it runs. And then it just stopped working. I didn't notice for a couple of months. Hmm. And I thought, you know what would be great is if I could just know when that happens because it's easy to fix but i don't know about it now i'm unprotected i don't realize it right so what i wanted was a way of being notified by next dns when my stuff is no longer using them and they don't provide that as a service but they do provide an api that you can just query and get your stats and stuff and know if you're still using the device and so i just scripted up a thing that just checks their api every half hour just runs off my laptop it doesn't have to be running like a server nonstop. It just has to run frequently and just checks next DNS's API and says, hey, are we still using you? And they say yes. And it does nothing. And then except for that one time when they say, no, you're not using me anymore. Mm. And then they just push notify me, says, hey, you're no longer using next DNS and I can go there and fix it. So that's my use case. Mm. But that's just one. You know, there's tons of little things. Love the sound of that developer experience. By the way, it was getting a bit like, wasn't it, Adam, like being stuck with the boring guy at the party? For a bit there, yeah, I was like, let's move on. <laughs> Dang, guys, you asked. I'm kidding. I was just agreeing with Matt. I was also kidding, but... Uh, so it integrates with a... You install, like, a package, Jared, on the UDM it's Pro? It's just a post. A HTTP post. No, 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 to configure it, to use DNS, the UDM Pro. Yeah, so there's different ways you can set up your network, and that's just the suggested one when you have access to the router, and you can... What are the other routes? I mean, could you just point to DNS servers? Because that would be the easy button there. You can. You have to, like if you're IPv4, they require you to have a, what do you call it, dynamic DY DNS. You have to have a dynamic DNS. DIN DNS, yeah. I don't know. There's some sort of like feedback loop they require. Hmm. IPv6 they don't require, but for some reason they say my network it does not support IPv6, which I found strange but didn't really care enough to futz with. So I didn't want to do it. You can also do it on the devices. So the cool thing about that is it protects you on cell networks as well. So... You can just install like the next DNS app on your phone. They are not a sponsor, but they darn near should be. And you can run it so you're running cell networks and you're running next DNS. And so you have all the same protections. So that's cool. So you can install it on every individual computer, but we have so many devices on our local network. That's painful. You want to do network wide. Yeah. And they're coming and going. So I just did it that way. And it works great until it just stops working. You don't have IP6. So does that mean you're going to miss out on all the new websites that come out? You're just going to only have the ones that are already on IP4. Is that how it works? So you just, you've still got Google and Wikipedia, but brand new websites. None of the fancy new ones? Yeah, there's going to be loads of new ones coming out. I don't know. I, wouldn't, I guess I wouldn't know about it. You'd have to tell me. What am I missing out on? You're going to be left behind, mate. You want to get that upgraded? I think he is upgraded to the point where you could be. I think Unify is pretty much on the edge of what's supported. I'm surprised by that too, but... Yeah, and it could be just a configuration on the router, but again... It's like a yak shape, right? Like, this doesn't work, so I'm going down this rabbit trail. I'm like, oh, that doesn't work, so I have to do this other thing. I didn't want to shave the yak. I just wanted it to work. Yeah. What you want is a good developer experience like Notify when you're just posting. It's just a command. It's just an HTTP post, and that's right. something you can use. That developer experience, I think, is really important. And this is part of, I think, what makes the tools good. The tools that we pick, like, they have usually a good developer experience when I mean, we're developers and I think that's something that when people just write tools, they don't spend enough time thinking about like making that sort of 10x experience for people, i.e. like make it just perfect, make it seamless. You shouldn't have to be fighting with config and things like this. As an example of something I built recently, we have, a, we have an API for this tool that we're building at Grafana, which is this like incident management tool. And the API has like a client, we built a client, we auto-generated it. 
um, that you can use. And in the client, you can switch it to stub mode so that you can just use it without it reaching out across the internet and it just gives you canned responses. So it's like built into the tool, it's expecting you to write tests with this at some point and making that easy for you to do Mm -hmm. in a way that's then where we sort of own the responsibility for making that right and people can just sort of rely on it. So it's like little things like that, I think, make all the difference. And that's, in all, obviously a lot of this 10x talk is kind of, you know, it's being quite silly. But if you want to really like deliver something that's amazing, spend the time on that polish a little bit and do less, have fewer features, but make them really good and pay attention to that developer experience. It makes such a difference. Most people will just breeze through it and they won't give it another thought. And in a way you've succeeded if that happens, but it gives you such confidence, doesn't it? When you use the tools, when it's just slick and it's like a pleasure to use, it makes all the difference. Yeah. I was thinking about that. Like what is good DX? And I think one of the things is like something that provides quick wins and freedom to tinker you know, without feeling like you're going to break something or harm something. Yes. But I mean, like with Notify, like, why did I pick that over pushover? I was like, well, I can just start with a curl post and see if it works. And I was like, oh, it works. I can install it on my phone. I can send myself just from the command line. Hey, you know, it's kind of fun. You're like, I'm push notifying random crap. And it has like geeky kind of things like, yeah, you can send emoji and you can have like warnings and titles and like that kind of thing that we nerd out on. Mm hmm. But that quick win of like, I'm sending myself and I'm receiving push notification within minutes of finding the service. Like to me, that's the kind of experience where I'm like, yeah, I'm going to keep trying this tool versus the one that has a little bit of the row bone. So I think that's really cool. The, this idea of just like freedom to tinker. I couldn't agree more. I think also, like you say, a quick win. Give people something for the investment they've just made. It's a big ask to get people to download something that you've built or try a tool that you're building. So reward them every step that you can somehow and have that as part of the sort of design when you're thinking about what this is. That makes a big difference for sure. And it's like people invest and then, you know, you give them something in return that's valuable to them. They will then in turn invest more often as long as you're getting it right and and solving the problems. And then that's really how you build trust with tools. It's like people have invested in making it uh, better in some way. Uh, That's very meaningful. And so it's like, yeah, I think there are a few like of these philosophies that just apply to everything we build and they're worth thinking about. Mm-hmm. Since we're, I guess, probing potentially for a next DNS sponsorship in the future, one way they could potentially make this service better is just to have that built in. That would have been the easiest thing. Yeah. Because it's not, I was looking at the documentation, it says queries from the UDM itself won't be routed to next DNS nor encrypted due to current system limitation, but all traffic on your network will, all devices on your network will. So, I mean, it could be like uh, somehow, you know, just knowing that it's connected or that the UDM is respecting the DNS routing. You know, it can be like doing a probe every five seconds. I don't know, whatever makes sense, essentially, and say, okay, essentially what you're doing with Notify, it's doing on behalf of the service. It's doing it itself. Right. So my code basically is just hitting their API, and I can't remember exactly what it's checking for. I'm going to see it right now. It's saying it gets the profiles endpoint, and then, well, that's just to get the ID. The actual query count is this analytics endpoint from the last hour, and if there's anything, then I'm fine. If there's zero analytics for the last hour from my profile, now we got a problem. And that could totally just be a thing that they build for you, and like, yeah, we'll notify you if it's not working. Now, they're Better UX, I guess, would be like it just doesn't break ever. But some of that's more on my router than on them, I guess, to a certain extent. So points for them for having an API that I can just call because that got me where I needed to go. So I'm still happy with them, you know. But even happier is if I could have just found in my settings somewhere to put my phone number in or somewhere it says notify. Even an email would have been fine. Email me when this goes down. Would have been cool. Uh, I don't understand why they're not just not letting you configure custom or manual DNS servers rather than installing something. Like, what is it doing on your network that requires an application or some sort of package to be installed on your machine? Why can't it just be DNS in the cloud that just knows your Mac ID or just something that's unique to your, could even be a key, a public key? I guess it's valuable that it's internally. Yeah, I just don't want to manage it at the machine level. Well, yeah, because like, I mean, the easy button to configure DNS is literally to put in DNS servers. Like, that's the easiest way. And in that case, Unify OS is always going to respect what you put in your settings to be your desired DNS servers. 
Right, but when you do that mode, they require a loop back to them for some reason. Like you can do that. You're right. So back to the DX. Yeah, I think they need to like better integrate with Unify. I think because they want to confirm that you are a valid customer of theirs hitting their DNS servers. Hmm. And so they want your IP address to be known. And so if you have dynamic DNS, because your IP address changes unless you pay for a static, right? So then if you pay for that, you can plug that back into their system and say, yes, I'm using your DNS servers and here's my IP that I'm coming from. It's a dynamic DNS address and they're fine. But if you don't have that, they don't want you just to use their DNS servers. They want to know that you're a customer, I guess. They need to talk to Tailscale because Tailscale's got this figured out. Tailscale is state of the art. Anyway, it's lovely to talk to you both. Uh, I'm just going to talk to some <laughs> other people at the party as well. Do we have anything else that we haven't discussed? Well, we said we were going to quickly talk about wired keyboards. Is this time a quick time for unpopular opinions? Oh, shoot. Let's do it. Two minutes each. Go. I actually think you should probably leave. As we open up the unpopular opinions segment, let's do a quick review of last time's unpopular opinions and see which ones actually were unpopular. So Adam said, you should really be habit stacking. Yes. Oh, yeah. This has stayed with me. This was 70% popular on Twitter. Who doesn't think that's a good idea? And I know. And on Macedon, it was loading slower because it's, Federated, 80% popular. Neither poll pulling in very many votes because it's kind of uh, not too controversial, I would say. Just like good advice. This one has stayed with me. I think about this a lot. Do you have it stacked now? It. Have you, are you a convert? Yeah. I particularly, uh, you mentioned in the example coffee. Um, and by the way, if you don't know what this is, go back and Jared will tell you which episode it is. Uh, go and listen to it. It's worth listening to some good tips. Episode... 526. 526, baby. The old classic. Put that in your ears, I think. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, but the coffee one, while coffee's being made, I have a robot make my coffee. I'm embracing the future. I will go and do something else, tidy something up, or make a different mess. Love it. I have a stack as well. Whenever I'm taking my vitamin D, I always take uh, K2 also. Oh, there you go. You've converted just a habit you're not stacking i stacked them together too tightly if they stack too tightly it becomes one habit hilarious nice okay cool matt said most people are building software wrong here's what's funny about this one this was not going to be matt's unpopular opinion here's a little bit of a meta game here before the show he actually told us what his opinion was going to be and it was something about having plans never works because something always goes wrong and during the show adam actually leaked that as a sentence. Did I? And Matt felt like now he couldn't use it as an unpopular opinion. And so instead he made this one up kind of on the spot. And I thought it was really funny because, you know, his plan didn't go well. You know, something went wrong and it ruined his plan. Proves my point. But instead he said, most people are building software wrong, which was 64% popular. So it's not unpopular. Uh, one person says, sounds like a culture problem to me. I've worked on several code bases that had more than 100 million lines of code that we knew Whoa. what we are doing and why it's important. So wow. shout out to Joseph Winston for an epically large app. That's on Twitter, of course. Tweet us those 100,000 lines. Let's have a look at them. 100 million lines. 100 million lines? <laughs> yes. Is that what he said? That's what he says. Now, he could just be lying. I don't know the guy, but that's what he said. 100 million lines. Where does he work? I should follow up on GitHub? Because he's talking about in its database. That's insane. Wow. <sighs> Over on Mastodon, 88% of people agree with you. Oh, wow. Uh, Murdo Savila says, I agree with anything Matt says. So you okay. have a sycophant there. Sounds smart. And then Elzap said, do y'all even try to make unpopular opinions anymore? Good point, Elzap. We're not doing a good enough job. And then Jesse from Australia, may or may not exist, says, this is a really boring take. The same as saying, quote, I could build Twitter in a weekend, end quote. Yeah, well, I could build it in a weekend. Hard to please, you know, hard to please. And yet most of the people agree with you. Any responses, Matt? Yeah, notice how the real people like me and then Jesse, this Australian person. <laughs> yes. They're like, oh, I don't like him. What an easy thing to say. Clearly a sock puppet. Yeah, because I had to think of it, Jesse. I had to think of it on the spot because Adam had ruined it earlier. And I'm trying to... How did I ruin it? Re remind me, do we have time to explain how I ruined it? 
Did I do it on purpose? Was it vindictive? You just said it. You know when you have a conversation with somebody and then later on you kind of say a thing that they said? Right. Uh, you did that. So he, he just kind of ruined it for an unpopular opinion. You, it wasn't on purpose. Because you saw it in the notes and you're like, ooh, I'm going to get me some of that. And then you got your little grubby mitts on it mm-hmm. and helped yourself to it. Okay. So I had to improvise a new one and it came out rubbish, Jesse, and it wasn't great. But you've got to be prepared to fail even in public, I think. We said this. You said this as part of your tips. That's right. Expect failure, basically. I'm paraphrasing your tips. Now, let's talk about Automagical for a moment. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. Because I was the most unpopular of the three of us, which makes me the winner. Not that anyone's keeping score, but I won by a wide margin. Although 57% of people did agree with me, which is less than you guys, but still more than 50 I also got more votes on mine, so I think it struck more of a chord. That's on Twitter, over on Mastodon, 50-50. 94 votes on Mastodon. Damn, how can it be 50-50 then? It can't be if it's 94. 94, yeah, you divide that by two. Oh, 47 each, yeah. Wow. So 50-50 is the least popular that we landed, but none of us were actually unpopular. So maybe we can beat ourselves this time around. Matt, what do you got? Sure can. I've got two. I've got an original one. We do. We did promise we were going to talk about wired keyboards. I'll just cause, just say quickly. Just lay my cards out on the table. Where are you going with your keyboard? It's still you just have it in the same place, except now it can run out of battery. Just plug it in. That's my unpopular opinion. Wired keyboards are tired, and what's wired is wired. Sorry, wireless keyboard is why tired. <laughs> no, this isn't going to be unpopular. Spit it out, Matt. Tired colon. Mechanical, no, tired, colon, <laughs> wireless keyboards, wired, colon, wired. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> that was just a disaster, but I loved every moment of it. Yeah, it was the best. Yeah, it was. But the editors are going to fix it, aren't they? And this whole clip's not going out. No, they're not. I have no idea what you're even talking about, but <laughs> yes. Okay, we actually cool. have an internal rule here at ChangeLog. Anytime Matt says the editors are going to fix this, it immediately stays in. Oh, so well, if you want it out, don't mention it. Shall I do my second one or do you want to talk about keyboards? No, Adam, go ahead. You can't, he's got two, he says. <laughs> yeah, well. Well, my second one is Apple Vision Pro. I think it looks amazing. I'm definitely going to be getting one. What do you think? I mean, come on. They've done a cracking job, it looks like. I agree with you, except for the buying it one. We did an episode on this and I've had time to think. And the thing that has changed my opinion about it is this idea of thinking of it like headphones for your eyes. And I saw this uh, somewhere. I'm trying to look where I found that, but it was like a Steve Jobs commercial, essentially like Steve Jobs talked about headphones and in your own world. And like, this is a, this is an evolution of headphones, but it's not just headphones. Now it's visual too. Yeah. I think there's a lot to be said there. It's like when you use headphones, you want to go into your own space with your own private music and not disrupt others. And that's kind of where Vision Pro is trying to go from a consumer standpoint. Now, a business application may be way different, of course, but from a consumer standpoint, it's like uh, headphones plus plus kind of thing. So I'm not excited about the price tag, but I really do want them. I really would. I really do want to enjoy what can be done there. Hopefully the world gets more vast. I'm sure it would. Yeah. I was surprised by the price, but you know, normally if you've got a 4K TV, that's 4K shared between both eyeballs. In the Apple Vision Pro, you get 4K per eyeball. So both eyeballs each get 4K. That's what I want. You know, we're talking, you know, it's a lot of Ks. Yeah, but it's a small screen because it's right in front of your eye. Even better. It's all condensed. It'd be so sharp. I agree, but in terms of cost, like usually you think about material costs that go into something. Whereas like a 85-inch 4K TV has a massive screen that has to have 4K across the entire thing. Your eyeballs just need these little goggles. I think it's like the 13 cameras and like there's just so many sensors in this sucker. What are you worried about? I don't know. I was surprised because, you know, the iPad, it was the original iPad, I think, was rumored at $1,000 and came out at 500 And they really kind of wowed everybody with that price point. Yeah. They went the other way with this, didn't they? It wasn't the iPad because that sounds cheap for the iPad. But anyways, it was a product that was like that. And this one, the rumors were 3000 So I was thinking, you know what, they're going to come in at like 2000 and really wow everybody. And they actually went the other direction. They went more expensive than the rumors, which is rare. 1999 is a good price to start with that, in my opinion. Totally. 
I might get one at nineteen ninety nine. Two K would be a, an okay investment for most people. I mean, that's an entertainment center of sorts. So right? it's expensive, of course, but an entertainment device is two K worthy. Like you buy two K TVs, not two K, but you get two thousand dollars worth of a TV <laughs> from a TV. And right. That's pretty common, right? Or K two TVs. Yeah, it's, that's a normal price. Well, the MetaQuest three is five hundred bucks, and you know, nowhere near as good. But is it seven times better than a MetaQuest three? I mean, that's the price and differential. Did you see um, Zuckerberg on Lex Friedman? I saw a clip, a six-minute clip. He was he did a standard like, I'm excited. It really validates things. Blah, blah, yeah, blah. I, I agree. They're coming at it from a different angle than us kind of thing. What else is he going to say? I'm crapping my pants. All our graphics looks 8-bit compared to this. Right. Quick quiz. Quiz time? Quiz time. Quiz time. Quiz time. Quiz time. If you've got two 4K screens in your eyeballs, how many total pixels is that? Closest wins. Jared, we're going to you first. Need an answer, please. How many pixels is two 4K displays? I'm going to go with 8,000. I know that's wrong. 8,000, good. Really good guess. Does have an 8,000 in it. Don't give him a hint. I didn't get. I didn't get a hint. Adam, uh, eight million. Eight million. Interesting. Okay. Well, the answer is two four K displays. You would have sixteen million five hundred eighty eight thousand eight hundred pixels. Eight point two million per four K display. Yeah, that's about right. Well, doesn't that require you to state the size of the display? Because isn't it pixels per square inch? It was four K in it? I thought four K told you how many pixels it was. Does it? I don't know. I don't know these things. I just figure a 4K display at different sizes is going to have a different number of is it absolute value of pixels. I don't know. I'm talking out my backside at this point. Go ahead, Adam. I think that the Apple Magic Keyboard is hands down the best keyboard ever created. Wow. Big words. Why? It's got this button right there. I put my fingerprint on there and boom. All things biometric. You find another keyboard, your mechanicals or whatever, it, it misses that. So I wouldn't mind having the traits and the attributes that, that you have. And that's cool. If they offered a Touch ID mechanical keyboard, I would say it competes. That feature right there alone is why I would only use this keyboard and not another. You could have just two connected and then you just reach over and touch the thing. True. And I saw, uh, who was it? Billy Bob Thornton? No, it was a YouTuber. Morgan Freeman. Oh. They actually... Russell Crowe? Yeah, he's, little, he's big on YouTube. No, neither of those people. They actually took apart a Apple Magic keyboard and pulled out all the Touch ID mechanical part, like all the hardware and stuff like that, and remade it, and they just made a Touch ID button that worked the same. That's cool. So I would agree. If you could, if it would just sell me just a button, then I would use a mechanical keyboard or at least be okay with trying other things. But until that happens, this, again, is hands down the best keyboard ever made. That's it. Wow. That's going to be unpopular. My keyboard also has one of those buttons. I will just go on record. But it's a laptop keyboard. Mm -hmm. But it is a keyboard and it has a button. Is it an Apple one? It's a MacBook Pro. Yeah, but they could do it. They could do it on, uh, I think they're doing it with your phone, aren't they? Like unlock with phone and you can use your face to unlock and things like this. So the, I found it. It's Snazzy Labs Snazzy. on YouTube. Yeah. Snazzy Labs. I made a tiny touch ID button for Mac. And in this video, he goes through all the steps. He disassembles an Apple Magic keyboard, pulls out all the inners necessary for touch ID, pulls it over to a standard device, it looks kind of cool. I think even 3D printed it. It's like a many, many steps to do it. A lot of effort. And it works. And it works. That sounds great. So Apple's really missing out. They could probably sell me that Touch ID thing, just standalone. Yeah. How many would you buy? One. Not 10. Would you plug it in or just have it in your pocket like your phone? Why don't you just use your phone? Uh, well, it would be for the computer to buy a metric to it. Yeah, so it'd be USB. Wired or Bluetooth? Well, in this case, it's that's the other cool thing. There's no wires. And this thing doesn't require charging ever, really. I mean, ever? It's like maybe once a month. 
and it's lightning, so I'm already charging other things with it, so yeah. it does it all. And it's I could just throw this thing across the room, and it would come right back to me like a boomerang, because it, it doesn't want to leave me. <laughs> oh, man. It would if that it had a, cable, cool. a bouncy cable on it, missing a trick. The trick really is, here's what makes this keyboard good. It religiously, on a daily basis, takes vitamin D and K2 together. Yeah, it never yeah. misses. It's got both the letters on the. It's got them, hasn't it? It's got them both. You can see the D and the K, and the two. And therefore, that's why it is, like I said, hands down, the best keyboard ever. Okay, yeah, it's concluded it. He summed it up, and I think that's a sign they move on, isn't it? My opinion is, I think Queen Latifah is the greatest queen in human history. In human, the greatest queen in human history. No, I just made that up because I still have an open tab that says Queen Latifah. I don't think I have a good one, a good enough one to share this week. Okay. You're going to pass. You can't pass. <laughs> All right. Okay. Here's one. Yeah. Here's one. I'll play the game. I'll play the game. He chooses to play. I think the word automagical is an awesome word, and I think that we should all use it more. <laughs> it's so useful in many circumstances. You can say it when you're trying to hoodwink somebody. You can say it when you're just too busy to answer a question and some... A non-techie person asks you how something works, you can just say it's automagical. You can put it on your splash page when you're trying to really sell your product as something that's just beyond automation. Yep. There's lots of different ways you can use it, and they're all pretty cool. I think we should continue using it, and actually I would say we should use it more than we currently do as yeah. software developers. Yeah, that, yeah. that synergizes with how I feel as well. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I've just written down some other places you could use it. Uh, you could get it uh, put on a cake... You could have it, there's just a cake there. You could get it on a t-shirt, and the obvious one, you could actually think it in a dream. It's also another way you could use that word, if you're looking for other ideas. You can actually change your last name to Ickle. Ooh. First name, Otto. Middle name, Magic. And then Ickle is your last name. Otto Magical. That's just your name now. Yeah. But most of the time, people don't use middle names, so that'd be Otto Ickle. Well, no, no, I w- that doesn't matter, Jared. You're, you would require full name. Okay, you wouldn't answer or respond. Then, worst case scenario, they're calling you Otto. It's like, come on, Otto. And they think I work on cars. In your accent, that's a really cool sounding name, I think. Otto. With, when I say it, yeah. I think that's, to my ear, that sounds cool. I think. Say it. Well, it's, just, it's just auto. It's not the same. Auto. Auto. Yeah. Auto. It yeah, sounds that's, fake, that is really it? right. It sounds like I'm putting it on. Otto. It sounds like a vitamin. Otto. Auto. Uh, Otto. Otto. I can't do it. Can you make a song? Called Auto Magical, Matt. Is that possible that you that you can s- song one more time for us? Oh, this will be how we end the show. Let's do it. Yeah. Could you automatically just sing? It's hard because that doesn't rhyme with lots of words, does it? But Lee rhymes with everything automatically. Yeah, then I don't know loads of Lee words. Free tree. We. You and me. Just let it be. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I I just need you to just accept cookies again because I've forgotten. Rejected. Reject all. (laughs) Bye, friends. Bye, friends. I'm looking at you. I'm wondering how you work. If I don't find out soon, baby, I'm gonna go berserk You don't explain it, I don't know a thing You say it's sort of magical and it makes me want to Scream Makes me want to scream Magical, let it be. If this episode made you feel on a magical, and you might even be up for some Matt Depends from our merch shop, let us know in the comments. We love hearing from you. And if you're picking up what we're putting down with Changelog and Friends, tell your friends about the show. Everyone's welcome. Coming up next, it's our old friend Brett Cannon from the Python Steering Council. Stay tuned right here. That'll be a good one. Thanks once again to our partners, Fastly.com, Fly.io, and Typesense.org, and to Breakmaster Cylinder for ensuring that we bump out the best beats in the business. That's it. This one's done. 
but let's talk again next week.